In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Amen. Just a few words about this gospel. We are in the middle of Lent, and this is the Wednesday of the third week of Lent here in Ireland. Our Lord is approached by the scribes and Pharisees, and they say to him, Why do your disciples transgress or disobey the tradition of the ancients? And our Lord says to them, Why do you break the laws of God? Why do you disobey the laws of God for your human inventions, for your human traditions? So our Lord is defending the honor of God. And St. Jerome has this to say. He says, The foolishness of the scribes and Pharisees is amazing. They rebuke the Son of God because he does not keep the precepts and traditions of men. For your disciples, they say, they don't wash their hands when they eat bread. So open brackets here. The Jews had everybody washing their hands seven, seven times before they ate anything. And it was just a human, a human invention. There was about 630 human precepts that the Pharisees imposed on the Jewish people. So, and they were just burdensome. And they didn't come from God. They were just man-made. So this is what they're... They're uh, rebuking our Lord for. Why don't your apostles wash their hands seven times before they eat? And St. Jerome goes on to say, It is the hands that is the works, not of the body indeed, but of the soul that are to be washed, that the word of God may be fulfilled in them. But our Lord answering them said, Why do you also transgress the commandment of God on account of your tradition? He refutes this false charge by a true answer. While you neglect the commandments of God, he says, on account of the traditions of men, why do you think my disciples are to be rebuked because they attach little importance to the ordinances of the ancients so that they may fulfill the the statutes of God? So is this not what is reproached to traditional Catholics? And the, the Navasoto Church, the Conciliar Church says, why don't you obey the new Mass? Why don't you accept the new sacraments? Why don't you accept and obey Vatican II? Why don't you accept these things? And Archbishop Lefebvre said, we, why don't you follow Catholic tradition? Why don't you obey the laws of God? Why don't you obey the Council of Trent and the Magisterium of the Church of Tradition? Why don't you go back and keep the Mass the Catholic Mass of all time, the Tridentine Mass. So it's very similar, the Pharisees of the Conciliar Church who, who oppress and punish and persecute Catholic tradition. And we just say with Archbishop Lefebvre, they say to us, why don't you obey Vatican II? We say, why, do, why should we obey the inventions of men? Because Vatican II was invented by Uh, a a group called the Paridi of high-paid Freemasons and enemies of Jesus Christ who infiltrated our Catholic Church and hijacked the Second Vatican Council. And Pope Paul VI said twice, we do not invoke the infallible authority of the Pope over this council. So all it was was just a huge big get-together of bishops who thought they knew better than Catholic tradition. And Archbishop Lefebvre was there to witness it. He said, I accuse the council because the Vatican Council in 1962 to 1965 overthrew Catholic tradition and introduced a man-centered religion and uncrowned Christ the King, took the crown off Christ the King. And, and for, for example, Father Dennis Fahey, he says that in Ireland already in 1923, the Freemasons were infiltrating the government here in 1923, and they changed the Constitution so that the Catholic religion, which used to be the state religion, was now all religions have a right. And in 1973, this was officially put in. 
And once the Freemasons, uh, uh, once they succeed to have this principle implemented, that all religions are treated equal, there is no true religion, Christ is not truly king, but all, Christ is put on a level with Muhammad, Buddha, Luther, Joseph Smith, and all the false religions, the result of this is the collapse of the Catholic Church and the collapse of all morals. Hence, the abortion law, the sodomite laws, and all these horrible laws being passed just right here in Ireland, which is a scandal to the whole world. A scandal to the world that a Catholic country like Ireland should fall to these horrible vices of the West. In the United States, where I'm from, there's a great love for Ireland, actually. They celebrate St. Patrick's Day, maybe, I don't know, maybe, maybe a little more than the Irish, I suppose, I don't know. But we have, the United States is very grateful and indebted to the Irish because so many Irish priests, hundreds of Irish nuns came to the United States and were pastors of souls and taught the children and brought the Catholic faith to the United States in the late 1800s, early 1900s. So the U.S., the United States Catholics are so indebted to Ireland. But when we see that Ireland has fallen, has been infiltrated and fallen and passing these horrible laws that offend God, it's, it's a very sad indeed and a great tragedy. And I'm sure you people here in Ireland, you grieve, you lament, you weep to see your country fall to these insidious traps of the Freemasons. And the, the Catholic Church has always condemned Freemasonry. And, and the Freemasons are the, the Judeo-Masonic high powers that St. Paul speaks of, the synagogue of Satan. It's the same clique that called for the condemnation of Christ, the synagogue of Satan. It's the same clique that called for the stoning of St. Stephen, that called for the scourging of St. Peter and Paul. It's the same synagogue of Satan, and it will always be a war between Christ the King and the Blessed Virgin Mary and Satan the Serpent and Freemasonry. It's always a war, and there will never be peace, and we always got to choose sides. So that's why we can say to the the... the those hijackers of our Catholic Church who promote the modernist religion, the conciliar religion, the new priesthood, the new sacraments, the new mass facing the people, the new theology, the new, that's a new religion, a man in religion. We can say to them when they say to us, why don't you obey the Pope? Why don't you obey the council? We say with Archbishop Lefebvre, why don't you obey Almighty God? Why don't you obey all the tradition of the Catholic Church? Why don't you obey the Council of Trent that condemned putting the Mass in English or the vernacular, that condemned the Mass facing the people? And that's where we have to stand. This is what Archbishop Lefebvre said to Pope Paul VI. Pope Paul VI asked him, why don't you obey me? And Archbishop Lefebvre said, Your, Your Holiness... Either I obey you and disobey all the 242 popes before you, or I obey all the popes before you and disobey you. And I choose to disobey you and stay with Catholic tradition. And of course, Pope Paul VI punished him by giving him an illegal suspension. Pope John Paul II also tried to crush Catholic tradition by the excommunication, a phony excommunication. And Archbishop Lefebvre was right. He was absolutely right. Here's his own words. Because one cannot say that one obeys authority today while disobeying the entire tradition. Following tradition is precisely the sign of our obedience. Jesus Christ yesterday, today, and forever. He is forever the same. One cannot separate our Lord Jesus Christ one cannot say that one obeys the Christ of today, but not the Christ of yesterday, because then one does not obey the Christ of tomorrow. This is of vital importance. This is why we cannot say that we disobey the Pope of today, 
and that for that reason we disobey the Pope of yesterday. We obey the Pope of yesterday. Consequently, we obey the one of today. Consequently, we obey the one of tomorrow. For it is not possible that the Pope's The popes teach different things. It is not possible that the popes gainsay each other, that they contradict each other. And this is why Archbishop Lefebvre always said that the master stroke of Satan was to sow disobedience to all of tradition through obedience. And how many priests, how many nuns, how many Catholic faithful lost the faith or went with the new religion because the bishop said you have to obey The Pope says you have to obey. The priests say you have to obey. Obey what? This tradition of men, this invention of heresy, an attack on the kingship of Christ, which Vatican II was. So this is why we reject this this man-centered religion of Vatican II in the conciliar mass, the new mass. We must reject this. And if it comes to blood, we must be willing to die for the Holy Catholic faith, rather than compromise it. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. So this is our battle. And your beautiful land here, Ireland, we went to the visit yesterday at one of the mass rocks, just 20 minutes from here, where the, the priest and the Catholic people came for mass out, out in the hills. It's a beautiful mass rock area. And, of course, why did they do that? Because the Catholic churches were closed by the Protestants. They were persecuting the Catholic church. And the Catholic faithful, did they obey these Protestant orders and obey these commands from, from England to, to submit to the Protestant heretical belief? They would be sinning to obey. They had to disobey. And they had to keep the faith. And they did it by having mass out in the hills, sometimes in, in the middle of the night. And sometimes the police would discover them by traitors. Oh, they're saying mass over the hills there. And the police would come and just massacre the priests and the faithful. How many martyrs? On all that blood of these great martyrs. Pray to these great saints of Ireland. Pray to them. St. Patrick is probably rolling in his grave seeing the state of Ireland now, especially the scandals of the clergy and the complete loss of faith and this new mass, this abominable new mass, this abomination of desolation set up in the temple of God, which offends him very much. So, so you, dear Catholics of Ireland, bring back the beauty of your country. Bring back the reign of Christ the King. Bring back the real faith, the real mass that made Ireland great and so Catholic. And that's your job, you youngsters. That is your job, is to bring back Ireland to the kingship of Jesus Christ, to the glory of God. And that that will happen with an army of priests, an army of nuns, an an army of consecrated souls and large families large Catholic families who uh, will homeschool and not send their kids to be perverted and propagandized to the new world order in these new schools. Even the Catholic schools have become more rotten than public schools. So we have to fight on and we have to rebuild. And you've got your beautiful land here in Ireland. You've got so many thousands of saints who died for the faith, fought for it, fought to the death for it rather than compromise. So let's beg the Virgin Mary to help us to fight to the end. And let's pray for uh, Pope Francis to do properly the consecration that Our Lady of Fatima asked. He's going to do it in two days to consecrate Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary by name, mentioning the consecration. So I know there's a There's a lot of dispute on this question right now, but Our Lady asked that the Pope consecrate Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. If he does that, heaven will open the floodgates of grace. So let's pray that he does it and does it properly and not pleasing the uh, enemies of Jesus Christ, but pleasing God, the Blessed Virgin Mary, who's given to crush the head of Satan. 
May she come back to Ireland again and crush the serpents that have taken, taken over Ireland, crush their heads, and drive their influence in their Freemasonic conspiracies out of Ireland and restore the reign of her divine son, restore the true Catholic mass of the Latin rite that, that made all the saints. All these saints here on the wall, they didn't go to the new mass. They all were nourished and fed on the true sacrifice of the cross, Jesus Christ crucified, which is what the mass is. This is why you altar boys are taught to kneel and genuflect and hold your hands properly like, little, like soldiers of Christ the King because we, we kneel before the throne of God. And the angels surround the whole valley here from heaven. They all are coming down now, getting ready for the sacrifice of the Mass. This is what the Mass is. Even in hell, when the priest says the words of consecration, even in hell they will feel the influence, the power of the sacrifice of the Mass. Jesus Christ the King crucified. Jesus Christ offering his bloody face and bruise, his five wounds, his sacred heart to the Father. And always near the priest at Mass is the Immaculate Heart of Mary, the sorrowful heart. And we go to this event every single Mass. That's why the Irish went out to the mountains to have Mass, to the Mass rocks, because they understood what the Mass is and they would not compromise with heresy and error. So we also must not compromise with Vatican II, the new Mass, the new Code of Canon Law, the whole new sacraments, the whole new man-centered religion. We stay with Catholic tradition. We stay with the Immaculate Heart of Mary, who will crush the head of Satan. May she preserve us by the rosary and the scapular to the end. O Mary, conceived without sin, Pray for us of every course to thee. O Mary, conceived without sin. O Mary, conceived without sin. And for those who do not have recourse to thee, especially all communists and Freemasons and other enemies of Holy Mother Church, amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.